Dear brothers and sisters, dear friends, we welcome you again for our divine service. As, a, as an opening hymn, we will sing hymn number uh, 53. Hymn number 53, Holy, Holy, Holy. of this beautiful hymn still in our ears. We will open our Bible and read the opening text, which is found in Amos chapter 4, verses, verse 12. Therefore, thus will I do unto thee, O Israel, and because I will do this unto thee, prepare to meet thy God, O Israel. With this word in our mind, we'll go on our knees for the opening prayer. O oh, dear Heavenly Father, this beautiful Sabbath morning, we're coming in the presence of the Lord to thank Thee for all the good showing upon us. We are thanking Thee for Thy uh, Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, that through Him we may have everlasting life. Father, help us to understand that great gift that You have given to us, that You give it to us everything that it was possible to give to this fallen human race, that through Thy Son we may have everything. Help us to understand that. Help us to be on thy side. Help us to understand the great truth that you wish to, uh, for us to understand, that we may have everlasting life. It is so hard for us to understand something that we never had, something that we, are, we cannot grasp on. But help us that we can be closer to thee, that we can be a light to this world through, through thee, that we may show thy character through, uh, in us, that we, uh, we can be light. Father, help us, be with us, forgive us our sins, forgive us shortcomings, and help us to be ready when you come again in the clouds of heaven. We are asking for thy blessings, for thy presence this morning. We ask you, maybe with uh, thy servant, our brother, who will present the message, guide us all and help us to understand thy will for us. We are asking all this, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Once again, brethren, I would like to greet you all for uh, our uh, divine service. And um, 
I would like to share with you a few announcements that we have uh, for this morning. Um, as you can read in, uh, in our um, uh, bulletin, the fellowship lunch is uh, after the divine service. Everybody is, is uh, um, welcome. The choir practice, so let us remember all those who uh, will uh, participate in the choir. 3.30 today, or maybe a little bit earlier, so it all depends how, when the brother from Postage will come. There also, there is an announcement for a prayer meeting every Tuesday evening at 7 o'clock, so again, all of you are invited. Uh, church cleaning and business meeting, this is happening tomorrow, so whoever can, whoever is willing to come for the uh, preparation for the cleaning and preparation for the, the uh, conference, our annual conference, in uh, uh, Canada, so um, at 10 o'clock will be a cleaning and also at uh, 2 o'clock we'll have the short um, uh, business meeting. Uh, and there's also a reminder that the, our conference starts next Friday at 7.30, so again, all of you is invited to come and participate in, in that meeting. So uh, right now I will call upon the uh, ashes to collect the uh, 11 o'clock offering. for uh, your offering. May the Lord bless the gift and the givers. Uh, and now I will call upon the, our youngest members for the uh, song they have for, uh, for us this morning.
children. At this, at this moment, I would like to call upon the brother Marian. He will deliver the message to us this morning. Are you ready to meet your Savior, Brother Marian? Happy Sabbath to everyone. May the Lord bless you and bless all of us that we are having this opportunity to be here and read the Word of God. So as uh, you already seen in the bulletin, we're, we're going to talk a little bit today about uh, if we are ready to meet our Savior. This is a very vast, very deep topic. We just get to the introduction. Uh, there are many aspects of our life that we have to uh, consider. Uh, regarding our preparation to meet the Lord Jesus Christ when he is coming again. Um, we miss already Brother Walter. He is not his presence with us, but we know that his heart is with us. And uh, on the other hand, I'm glad that he is a representative of the, the field, his Canadian field in, uh, in the family of Brother Daniel Dumitru, comforting the family and being... Uh, close to them in the, the heart moment. And uh, I consider that the, the Bible, the teachers of the Bible, many times instruct us that sometimes it is better to, to visit the people that are in, in these uh, hard times. I mean, when they, they lose their dear friends or member of the family. Uh, in this kind of situation, we will realize and acknowledge that our life is short. And uh, we are dwelling on the planet Earth temporary. And we should consider that we need to prepare ourselves, even to go to the resting place or to meet our Savior. I do believe that the Lord Jesus Christ is coming soon, and I do believe also that you have the same hope, great hope in your heart. And from the beginning, when the first parents, Adam and Eve, they left the Garden Eden, I try to imagine how was their heart, their feelings, leaving the paradise when and where they met their creator every day, every moment. They were walking with him, and his presence was among themselves. After leaving that place and realizing that the, the uh, punishment, or well, let's say not punishment, but the results of their sin is to be departed from the place and to stay in another place, not in the paradise of, of the Lord, when they realize that somebody is going to pay for this mistake, I do believe that they were instructed that one day they'll have the chance to meet the one who is going to pay for their debts. From that time, I think they instructed their children. And it's not surprising that um, Enoch, the seventh patriarch from Adam, was already starting to preach about the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have that in the Bible, is written. And also, we have, even in the book of Job, when he said, my Redeemer is alive, and my eyes will see him. So all those teachers of the Bible show us that the people, they have knowledge about their preparation, how to dwell on the planet Earth, this temporary life, and how to prepare for eternal life. So, um, in the Old Testament, it's written that the Lord is appealing to our heart, prepare to meet thy God, O Israel. Not only in that time, but we can see in the New Testament, when the Lord Jesus Christ, 
he was visiting, visiting this planet Earth. We remember that the people realize there is no other greatest master than him. Nobody spoke before like him. They said that, even the you know, you know, Pharisees and uh, rabbis and other people. And in uh, Gospel according Matthew, chapter 7, we have a very interesting chapter where the Lord Jesus, when the Lord Jesus Christ, he spoke to his disciples and to the people that they were, were around him, that we should take serious this preparation, our preparation for the heavenly place. And in Matthew chapter 7, verse 21st, it is written that it's not enough to say, Lord, Lord. And just to say to the Lord, we did that in thy name. No. He said that who is doing the will of his father, that person understood what is the requirement of the Lord for him and his life. So, in the same chapter, we find that the Lord Jesus Christ used to speak in parables. And one of them is to be careful when you build a house. Metaphorically speaking, the Lord Jesus Christ, I believe that is not something new for you. He was not speaking about their houses. But like I said, as I use this metaphor to, to emphasize that our preparation is very important. He said, therefore, whosoever hear this saying of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And we have the other part of this parable. And everyone that hear these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house. And it fell, and great was the fall. My dear friends, did the Lord Jesus Christ spoke about the house? You see so much interesting about how we build our temporary dwelling here. It was he speaking about, literally, about the buildings. Later on, we, we, we can see in the scripture that even Apostle Paul, he comprehended this thought. And as one of the apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ, he just underlined these teachings. We have a text in, um, I'm sorry, in uh, 1 Corinthians 3, verse 13. This is Apostle Paul speaking every man's work shall be made manifest for the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is again do we understand what is the Lord Jesus Christ speaking about and even Apostle Paul? Are they speaking about something specific uh, from the planet, I mean worldly things that we are doing with our hands or something else? What is that thing that we have to build in this short and full of trials life? What do we take with us, the only thing that we can take with us 
in a heavenly place. Right. That's the right answer. Character. So we kind, kind of understand what the Lord Jesus Christ was speaking about at the time. And let's see what is character or the character. So if we look to different sources, I mean, dictionary, we can define it in this way. The whole fundamental psychomoral psycho qualities of man, which manifest themselves in his behavior and actions, in his attitude towards society, towards work, people, and his one person. That's kind of definition. But is enough to define? I will add some more other comments on this. You know, we present ourselves when maybe we want to, you know, to talk to the people that we are working in this kind of business and we prepare ourselves <coughs> having with us all the time business card, right? And say, well, a lot of information are on the business card. So if you like to contact me, please call me. There is phone number and everything. I was thinking about that our character, it is kind of an unwritten business card. Before we, we handle that, maybe the people, they don't have the chance to see our character, but later on, they will see that. So it's engraved in our depths of our being. The character could be defined us um, is a presentation, is what we show everywhere, anytime, and to anyone. We present that everywhere, anytime, and to anyone. So this is what speaks more than uh, we, we express by words. It is a presentation of me and of yourself, if you want, without words. But it's expressed through the way that we dress. It's expressed the way that we act in society. It is expressed the way that we act in the family. It is expressed the way that we act at the workplace. And if you want more details, if it is expressed, even the way that we are driving on the road, and many other, other you know, ways that we can express, is a presentation without words. We are, we are saying nothing, but we present ourselves and our character. Um, one of the presidents of the United States Abraham Lincoln once said, character is like a tree and reputation like its shadow. So it depends from these two, which one is important for us. Because the shadow is what we think of it and the tree is the real thing. So. Uh, it's good to have a good reputation, but sometimes that is not who am, who am I really am at the, at the time, right? So uh, more than that, I heard this expression and uh, I think it's not something new for you. My question is, could it be true? What? That the people might have a public face and what do we expect? And a private face. Have we ever heard about this? So how can we explain this? So most of us we are Tempted to, uh, our tendency is to, to have a better behavior when other people are around us and uh, will be different than 
we are acting in the private way. I mean, when we feel home, we, we feel like to act naturally. So more than that, uh, one of the, the British writer and politician, Thomas McCurley, once said, the measure of a man, of a man's character, is what he would do if he knew he never would be found out. So it's not surprising that the people can act in at least two different ways. But sometimes when we step into the, um, let's say, malls or something like going for shopping, sometimes we are surprised by the sign where it's written, smile, you are on camera. So very kind, very gentle uh, appeal to your heart to act and to use your public face, right? What about if we don't know about that? Maybe we come with our, you know, private face, we will speak our words, we'll be sad, we'll be, you know, worried about. There is no way to be forced to, to, to smile. We're supposed to be natural in that way, right? We're supposed to, to act the, in the same way in different places. So many people, like this uh, writer said, they will have different action and thoughts if they will notice that they are uh, recorded or filmed or something like that. He who comes to the Lord Jesus Christ and who believes on him and makes his, his exam him his example, realize the meaning of the words, to them he gave the power to become the sons of God. So the gospel has the power to transform even the people that they have unconverted temperament, they will be transformed by the example of the Lord Jesus Christ, will be influenced by his example. Um, the spirit of prophecy described, because I'm going to use some, uh, some example for the spirit of prophecy, is, um, is more than enough for me to understand what I need for my preparation in this short time. The mental and moral powers which God has given us do not constitute character. They are talents which we are to improve in and which, if properly improved, will form a right character. So maybe many of us are different than other people. And they believe that they are, because they, they, they have mental powers and the moral powers more than others. They believe that they have a good character. But according with the spirit of prophecy, this is from God, we receive from him, and they don't, do not constitute character. And more than that, a man may have precious seed in his hand, but... That seed is not an orchard. The seed must be planted before it, come, it can become a tree. So we have all those gifts from the Lord. But at the end, how our character will be depends how we use this. So let's go further. The mind is the garden. And the character is the fruit. God has given us our faculties to cultivate and develop. Our own course determines our character. In training these powers so that they shall harmonize and form a valuable character, we have a work which no one but ourselves can do. That's why, to me, and if you like to take this, the preparation is personal and to prepare our character is something that nobody can do for you and for me. This is a work which no one but ourselves can do. That's why it's so, so much important for us. God's ideal for his children is higher than the highest human thought can reach. 
Be therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. My dear friends, the Lord is not asking us to be perfect in our small sphere of influence as He is on the throne of universe. But to be perfect in our small influence means a lot. For example, if I am doing a job, very simple job, I mean just cleaning the streets or taking care of the, the streets. That is a very simple job. And let's say it doesn't require a lot of you know, knowledge or preparation or studies. Do you believe that I can be perfect in that sphere of influence? If I do that job perfectly, if nobody have comments and nobody can claim or blame my job, if my, my life will reflect the life of the Lord Jesus Christ, in my sphere of influence, I will represent the Lord. And then He will help me to be perfect. So nothing else scared the, the enemy of the Lord. Then one day we'll wake up and we'll take very serious this promise of the Lord. And we'll take this command as a promise. When the Lord says, be perfect, he will give you the power to be perfect, if you like to. He cannot work with ourselves unless we accept that. And we, we surrender ourselves in the hands of the Creator, and He can work with us the transformation that we're supposed to have. The plan of redemption contemplates our complete recovery from the power of Satan. So to live without sin, it will be something that is not like a very big challenge. So, so many people, they believe, oh, it's not possible. It is a challenge. It's something like we cannot achieve without the help of the Lord. But the plan of redemption contemplates our complete recovery from the power of Satan. He wants us to be perfect. And he can help us. Christ always separates the country soul from sin. He came to destroy the works of the devil. And he has made provision that the Holy Spirit shall be imparted to every repentant soul to keep him from sinning. When we stop sinning, what's the next step? Who is, you know, the enemy of the Lord and the enemy of the human beings? He will come and there is no, no point in my life just to show that I, uh, you know, I have something wrong in my character. He is pointing out to us. You want to take Marian to the heavenly place? No. He has these things in his life. But then, when the Lord Jesus Christ will, will impart his Holy Spirit, he will help us to, to be away from singing. Now, the ideal of Christian character is Christ-likeness. As the Son of Man was perfect in his life, so his followers are to be perfect in their life. Jesus was in all things made like unto his brethren. So we have a list here that we're supposed to, to keep in mind. He became flesh even as we are. He was hungry and thirsty and weary. He was sustained by food and refreshed by sleep. He shared a, the lot of men, yet he was the blameless son of God. He was God in the flesh. His character is to be ours. So, can we, um, you know, excuse ourselves sometimes? I was tired. I couldn't resist. You provoked me, and that's why my character is a little bit different now. But I'm not like that. So, I was thirsty, I was hungry. Hungry men, angry men, right? No, there is no excuse. The Lord Jesus Christ... Uh, he lived and he experienced in his life everything that a human being will experience in his life. The Lord says of those who believe in him, I will dwell in them and walk in them 
and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. My dear friends, the preparation is something that we will not learn in the in a theory. Character is never built in, the, in a classroom. But there we have the, the theory, right? Look, character is built in the, the circumstances of life. The classroom Bible, as in our Sabbath school, we learn. But what is our prayer after that? Lord, help us to apply this in our daily life. If we remain only with the theory, then it's not so much helpful. So the classroom Bible study is simply the place to identify character qualities and teach how character is developed. When we understand how God uses circumstances to develop character, we are able to respond correctly when God places us in character building opportunities. So, how can we react is based on what we choose in accord with our knowledge. Um, sometimes the people judge like is written the book because of the cover. But sometimes they are right if they judge us. Let us live in the way that the Lord Jesus Christ lived on his planet, on the planet Earth, when he was visiting this planet Earth. There are no excuses. God builds character in our lives by allowing us to experience situations where we are tempted to do the exact opposite of the character quality. Where you have the weak point do not be surprised if the Lord will allow the circumstances to come. Just, I, maybe I will say, I have, a, you know, I have no patience. And you know that we will talk, maybe we talk each other in the family. Please, keep in mind, you know, I have a bad temper. I cannot be tempered. Do not provoke me. Many times, the Lord will, will put us in the circumstances and, and uh, will give us this occasion to work in that weak point until we will become meek and humble, have a lot of patience. So character development always involves a choice. When we make the right choice, our character grows more like Christ. If you want to know that Christ-like character looks, what Christ-like character looks, a good place to start is the list of nine character qualities that Apostle Paul enumerates in uh, Gal Gal Galatians chapter 5, starting with verse 22. And I believe you know this. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Nobody can condemn you if you have those qualities. Plus, you will have a, a character like the Lord Jesus Christ. The fruit of the Spirit is a perfect picture of Christ. He embodies all nine qualities. If you are going to develop Christ-like character, you, too, and me, must have these qualities in your life. Our giftings are just that gifts from God, and they do not impress Him. Well, you know, I play very well piano. I'm a very good singer. I sing in a choir. But sometimes, no, those gifts are not going to impress the Lord. He gave us, and what impressed the Lord, and thus, what should impress Christians is when someone has a godly character. It's like we are as, as a parents. We expect our children to have a very good behavior. Maybe they are smart, they are intelligent, 
they went to different universities. Or in their childhood, maybe they, they are brilliant. That is a very good point, and we are blessed having those kind of children. But what we expect from them, the most, to have a good character. And that the Lord expects from us too. Because that will represent his character on the planet Earth. We must remember that we are not rewarded for our gifts, but for our character. And we can be sure that good character is what will count at the judgment. Do you believe that? Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ is making the, the right you know, judgment at the time based on our character. He cannot change if we don't like that. So we need this preparation before we will hear the, the voice saying, it is finished. Because there is no point. There is no time to change. If we develop the character which God can accept, we must form correct habits in our religious life. Daily prayer is essential to grow in grace and even to spiritual life itself. It is temporal food for physical well-being as it is is temporal food for physical being. We should accustom ourselves to leave the thoughts often to God in prayer. If the mind wanders, we must bring it back. By persevering effort, habit will finally make it easy. We cannot for one moment separate ourselves from Christ with safety. We may have his presence to attend us at every step, but only by observing the condition which himself he himself has lain down. Christ ha <clears throat> has given us no assurance that to attain perfection of character is an easy matter. But a noble, all-around character is not inherited. It does not come to us by accident. A noble character is earned by indiv individual effort through the merits and grace of Christ. God gives the talents, the power of the mind, we form the character. My dear friends, let's go to the conclusion. It is formed by heart, stand battles with self, because the Lord gave us this opportunity. Otherwise, we'll be forced to be changed, to be transformed. If we allow, we have to take care of ourselves. Self. Conflict after conflict must be waged against hereditary tendency. We shall have to criticize ourselves, not others, closely, and allow not one unfavorable trait to remain uncorrected. Every act of life, however unimportant, has its influence in forming the character. A good character is more precious than all the possession. And the work of forming it is the noblest in which man can engage. Have you ever considered that the preparation that we are doing now to build our character, not our houses, will last for eternity? We'll enjoy this, what we are building now, as long as the life of the Lord is long. Infinite, eternity. So, it's a more precious, precious than only possession. And the work of forming it is the nobles in which men can engage. Are you ready to meet your Savior? Do you believe that your character is already built and we, we can wait every moment the Lord Jesus Christ to come back? My dear friends, the Bible says that if we are ready or not, that the people that are looking and waiting for his second coming 
or the people that ignore that, all of them, they will meet the Savior of the planet Earth. All the inhabitants of the Earth will have the chance to see his face. Now, because we have these teachers of the Bible, do we like to prepare ourselves in the way that we'll hear the words from the Lord Jesus Christ? Come, the blessed one, and inherit the house of my father. Or we run away and ask the, 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 the rocks to fall upon us, to hide ourselves from his face. My dear friends, the Lord Jesus Christ left and he encouraged his people with these words. Let not, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. What is the Lord Jesus Christ doing now? Preparation, my dear friends. He's preparing the place for ourselves, for us. He's preparing and waiting. And I don't know how long we'll take this. We are living in an extended time. And even the Lord, by His grace, is granting all, all the time one more day, one more day. I know it's not easy to start and we don't know sometimes how to start. But please, my dear brethren, look to the Bible, read in the Bible. This is the promise of the Lord. If we would like, He can start right now. The promise is there, O house of Israel, can I, cannot I do with you as this potter, says the Lord. Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in my hand, O house of Israel. If we like to, to be molded, to reflect the character of the Lord Jesus Christ, if we like to, to be transformed in his grace, he is ready. Let him mold our character. Let, he, let him help us to prepare better for his second coming. May the Lord put these words in our hearts and to take it seriously every day. May the Lord bless us and be with us. Amen. Thank you, Brother Marion, for that uh, question, actually, that uh, we have. We should ask ourselves every day, this is an uh, individual question, am I ready to meet my Lord and my Savior each and every day? So, in closing, we will... Uh, all rise and sing hymn number 328. Father, we come to thee. 328. Please arise.
Mario, will you lead us in prayer? Holy Father, which art in heaven, we come before thy throne of grace in thy presence, worship you, and thank thee for this opportunity to, to celebrate the Sabbath together in this place. We thank thee in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ for health, for our families, for the bread that we have on our tables, for everything that we receive from your hand, Lord. Please be merciful and cleanse our hearts and help us, Lord, to consider this preparation for the heavenly praise. Help us to love the things that you love, Lord, and help us to hate the things that you hate. Help us to dwell upon the earth according with thy will. Bless our children, bless our friends, bless our, bless our families, Lord. Bless the people that are sick today. Be with them and comfort their hearts. Be with the people that are suffering loss and comfort their hearts as well, Lord. Bless our congregation from the little one to the old one. And give us the Holy Spirit to lead us every day in every moment. We thank Thee for this amazing grace that You would like to save all of us and to be ready for the second coming. Help us, Lord, because we can do nothing without You. In the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we ask and pray for everything through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Uh, we, uh, with song and prayer, we come to the end of our uh, morning service. And uh, let us remember all those who uh, participate in choir to be here right after 3 o'clock. May the Lord bless you in the rest of this Sabbath day.